Hello, my name is Simon. Thank you very much for tuning into my YouTube channel again. Very much appreciated. Thank you to subscribers. Thank you to new subscribers. Thank you for your likes and your comments. I hope you enjoy the film. Please feel free to comment, like and enjoy. I hope you can just make out the red cross in the satellite view there. That's where we're starting off from our mooring outside the Globe Inn at Linslade. In this next picture here we are going to travel down through Leighton Buzzard. I've marked just the beginning of our route with the yellow line along the route of the canal. So hello again, we've just left our overnight mooring at the Globe Inn at Linslade, just on the outskirts of Leighton Buzzard. Again it's another lovely sunny day. It won't be long now before we reach the first lock of the day. That will be Leighton Lock with a rise of 6 feet 8 inches. It's just round the bend here. That's just looking back at Leighton Lock after we had gone up it. A couple of boats just entering the lock there. Funny little device on the side with the butterfly going round as a solar powered kind of petal. This is the Wyvern Shipping Company. It's a holiday hire boat firm at Leighton Bussard. I think it can't have been the school holidays yet because it looks as though a lot of their boats are still in the yard. They're beautiful looking boats with them all being moored there and three abreast as you can see now I did leave quite a narrow channel for going past them I wouldn't have fancied steering a, a wide beam boat past them there just room enough so here we're coming to the Leighton Buzzard moorings where these are permanent moorings a very interesting shaped boat just there and we're just going past the entrance to the Tesco supermarket and its shopping stop. I think we would have pulled in but the uh, space wasn't just quite big enough for our 60 foot long narrow boat and we weren't particularly desperate for food shopping. Having just passed through bridge 114 I believe there is a water point around here just hidden out of view some newish looking flats 
with some old gates may have been a basin there at one time I'm not sure where those lock gates are I think they may, may just be symbolic these houses are very nice with the they've got their own gardens but they seem to share all the water frontage along the side of the canal it's not the only time I've seen that I've seen that somewhere else as well where the houses have their own gardens and share the land next to the canal this is another fascinating boatyard as uh, the boats are out of the water to a large extent and again all in various stages of repair absolutely fascinating to go past them I sometimes wonder how boats ended up in that situation but I suppose the boats become a certain age and then they need a bit of work doing on them whether it's a new floor or a new interior few new boats there as well, new shells and somebody's been putting quite a bit of graffiti on the bridge 115B so we're just coming up now to Grove Lock luckily there was a boat just near the lock and it said could they share the lock with us this is the boat just there uh, we stopped above the lock at Grove Lock Marina where we were able to top up the diesel tank heading off down to London I wasn't too sure where you could get diesel and I had had a problem with the diesel tank in the autumn of the year before I was changing a filter to the diesel hill heater and the filter was full of mucky white black slimy stuff and it was the diesel bug which I'll let you google so we've just passed there through church lock and we're out in the countryside again having left Leighton Buzzard behind us and it is absolutely stunning if you look across to the hills you can just see there the lion that's the whipsnade white lion on Dunstable Downs it was cut in 1935 and is over 480 feet long this is Slapton Lock we're just coming up to now with a rise of seven feet one inches boat and the lock just coming down and that's the view looking back to the lock after we've just gone through it quite a lot of moored boats in the area it is absolutely lovely this countryside and I think that is our second ship's lifeboat another boat that needs a bit of covering up now look at this heron here I think he's just sunbathing himself or oh, he's had a wash and he's drying himself off it's the, one of the few times I've seen a heron in that position there's the whipsnade lion again on the hillside and now we're coming up to Horton Lock with a rise of 6 feet 9 inches lovely cottage there built in 1914 at the side of the lock we decided to moor up for the day that's just looking back again at Horton Lock and in this lovely setting we decided to pull in and stop the night I think the only thing you could hear was possibly some cows in the barn across the canal this is the next morning we've set off again looking back again at Horton Lock this 
is the first of the two Ivinghoe locks giving a total rise of 14 feet 3 inches this is the second of the two Ivinghoe locks and I'll let you soak up the scenery a bit more another lovely sunny day so this is the second as I said of the two Ivinghoe locks that's just leaving the, the second Ivinghoe lock coming up I think to bridge number one two three at Great Seabrook there are three locks spaced a little distance apart they're coming up to the first of the Seabrook locks and very kindly and helpfully the boat that was sharing the locks with was getting it ready that's just left lock number 34 first of our Seabrook locks go around the bend and lo and behold the second of the Seabrook blocks got a pumping station there I think to do some back pumping up the locks to help with water levels Rosemary, Rosie and Jim at the window and this will be the last of the Seabrook blocks and then you come across a swing bridge bridge number 125 a little bit stiff to operate. Having just passed underneath the railway line you can see the amount of work that went into all the bricks that were laid in the course of building that bridge over the canal. Just going underneath bridge one two six. Fascinating looking house there. And Dunstable and District Boat Club have some moorings. And they've got their own kind of covered area for painting or similar work. And their own pull out area on a trolley to take your narrow boat out of the water to do work on the hull. And black the hull. Beautiful setting there. Grand Union Canal Carrying Company Limited. Didn't quite see the engine in the boat there which was called Orion. That's another interesting shaped boat. Rather unique and we're just coming up to the first of the Marsworth locks it's two quite close together before you get to the village of Marsworth literally close together turn the camera around to see the first one we've just been through and that's the second one lock number 38 so having left lock 38 we are going to moor for the night just before bridge 130 and we did that because we didn't fancy doing another seven locks or so that day which would take us up to the summit pound at Tring so I'm going to say cheerio thank you very very much for watching my films again thank you for subscribing please feel free to comment and like but we had a nice walk round the village of Marsworth and we're able to go to the pub and have a drink cheerio